si brinuti o tebi, draga moja. <laughs> and I am saying you're wonderful, as long as we all stay on the right side of you. Because if we don't, <laughs> you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> And this yeah. is where, for me, the series opens up, where, which I thought where they would go with it when they announced the second series was explore the criminal underworld of, of the, the valley. Of the valley. And yeah. the maf I can't remember the name of the family now that they said that are oh, the Halifax the... Mafia. It's like an Eastern European name, isn't it? Yeah. And I thought that was all fascinating. And then you balance that against the fact that they are now doing more stuff with the characters, more stuff with Claire, which I love with Siobhan Finner, and now she's put oh off the wagon. Oh, my God, they and, are... I mean, those two mm. have the most incredible chemistry. Yeah. You could not even create that. That is just there. I don't, for a second, disbelieve any of their relationship. No, no. I just think it's and, perfect. And you believe that she's been through all this before with her, and now she's sort of maybe yeah. stepping back into her old habits. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm coming with you. OK. No, I know where you're going. Whatever. Don't do this. I need some space. I need for you to stop pestering me, what, Catherine. What, what about me? What about him? Oh, look, you see, this is what it does to you. It makes you selfish and small-minded and unpleasant, and that isn't you. Oh, just one day, just for one day, will you stop going on at me? No, Claire, this is the day I need to go on at you. Please, please don't do this. I'm saying it because I love you. I'm begging you. I'll beg. Oh. I'll beg. I'll do oh. anything. Yeah, I'll be fine. Tomorrow, no, I'll no, start again. No, tomorrow you'll need another drink. If you drink now, oh, you'll you need shit. shit. You stop it now. I'm sick of it. hit this on the Oh, you're now police bollock shit. Do you know, if you go down to the jockeys, one thing will lead to another. You know what I'm talking about. There is nothing you can't buy down there. You're not in charge of me, Catherine. Just get out of my life. Go away. Go away. Right, well, that's it then. The door will be locked when you stagger back and you can bang as loud as you like, you'll not get back in. OK. I'll leave all your belongings and your bits and pieces on the street outside the front door. Whatever. Oh, and remember, there's a fella out there murdering and mutilating vulnerable women wandering about at night on their own. Now, did you think, because obviously they brought back Con O'Neill again as her... Um, is he playing Neil? Is Neil the character? Yes. Con O'Neill as Neil. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be it's just easier that way, isn't it? <laughs> he had a similar experience to the um the, is it John, the police officer? Yeah. Amelia Bullmore, Kevin Doyle's character. That he had a fatal attraction type mistress. He had an affair, and that, they revealed and that. He had a breakdown. Yeah. yeah. And I it le- it did leave me wondering whether it was the same woman. I don't know it if did it did make me say, think yeah. was it Amelia Bullmore, mm. but then they've got rid of her in a mm. way, so it just... But then obviously her murder investigation will become part of I'm guessing the rest of the series. I don't know. But it is again it opens it up. You've got now this the this dead woman, you've got still again that the character played by Matthew Lewis, you're still not sure about him. You see him sort of driving around by the prostitutes and stuff like that at one point. And also, I, I think, you know, you've got Shirley Henderson in mm. there now. As uh, they do really a need to, yeah, they really do need to increase their CLB checks in, in Halifax. Really. They do, yeah, but just anyone could be a teacher. She's a teaching, assist- she's a teaching DBS. assistant, isn't she? It's called DBS checks now. What yeah. is it called? DBS. DBS. Well, whatever. Mm. Having someone who's visiting a psychopathic criminal in prison then be then allowing to be the TA to his son. Yeah. Is... Yeah. Gives you some hope though if you go back into the school <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in this is so good. I even love her grandson. Mm. I think his portrayal is brilliant mm. as well. He just, just feel oh, he just like looks so, so like normal. he is like a nine year old boy. Yeah. Like, you know, he just I know he is a, probably a nine year old boy, but you know he... No, he's actually three midgets. But I mean <laughs> All joking aside, I wrote a piece today saying how perfect this is. It really is the best BBC drama in, I would say... Ooh, careful. Te- five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, I would say. <laughs> doing a step in step. what? <laughs> five, six... I don't know. Six. I Life on don't Mars? Know. Probably. It's probably the most unique... Mm. British drama since, like, yeah, probably. Mm. Sherlock? The Life on Mars. Put that on the DVD box set. The first yeah, series sh- of Sherlock, come on. But this goes no, back on to our sort of... Come on. You know, the first series of Sherlock, there... 
It, 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 before yeah. after Life on Mars, we the all the first two series that. of Sherlock's. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. I I don't have that connection with Sherlock that I have. No, with because you've been Happy tainted Valley. by later series. Come on, you you loved that first episode with all the right in the this, screen. This goes this goes back to again the perfect TV series. Is there one that's good from yeah. beginning to end that we talked about recently? So far, this is perfection on a TV mm. plate. You haven't seen the ending yet. <laughs> It's called The Midwife. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> this, this was just the traumatic episode. The bit that got me was the young woman giving birth on her own. I just... Oh, was... over the phone, yeah. The... Yeah, just to... absolutely How do you do that? With the Welsh lesbian nurse on the other side of the phone. Yeah. What, I... you mean like, over like a fax machine? Or... <laughs> No, basically, she was having contractions. She, uh, water's broke. She started having contractions. I know how it works. Yeah, I know. No, look, I'm going to set up the scene. The midwife's yeah. car wouldn't start. So rather than being there in five minutes, she had to get on a bike and she wasn't very good. And it took her 15, she 20. She ride a bike. It's yeah. not just like riding a bike. During that time, the woman delivered her own baby. And it was harrowing. It was traumatic. It was traumatic. And as well, it was... It, it was just emotional. It was just like you, you really felt for this woman. You felt the pain, and then you that she was later, going yeah. through. But I think they did it brilliantly this week, where she she didn't feel good enough to be the wife of. Yeah, he was an older man she'd married, and she didn't feel good enough to be the mother of the daughter that she'd had, or a wife to this sort of. And well that had a lot to do, to do with her upbringing. Yeah, but you, you didn't, didn't know you found you, that out. Yeah. And I loved how they revealed it by and by that she grew up in an orphanage and then you found out she used to be a prostitute and it was really really well crafted that yeah. they didn't hit you over the head with it and i thought the actress who was actually apparently an australian actress oh right uh, it was really really strong she hasn't uh, the only uh, credit she has so far is in home and away but this i thought she was i thought she was excellent in this as well i mean they had this sort of historical story this week was to do with the smoking and lung cancer and stuff like that Mm. I like how they only had the one sort of birth story this week and everything else was sort of related yeah, what, to the health. What, what, they, managed, what they managed to do in, in this episode, because they had the whole episode about the, the, the haberdashery shop as well, which was the light relief. Yeah, the light relief was Minty, was from, it, Minty from EastEnders and his that's haberdashery right, with, shop. with Minty. But even that was slight. And obviously, you know, there was no coincidence that this episode showed on Valentine's Day. They probably planned that because this was... Of all the episodes, this was the one with the most couples and and mm. kind of like strains on I relationships. It was the dad who decided to have radiotherapy yeah. or something so he could be with his kids a bit longer. And, in his and, and the development of the doctor's son as a major character as well, how he sort of yeah. almost, almost like how duped they, his parents yeah. into giving up smoking. I was just mesmerised again how, how well this was written and how good it was. I mean, Linda Bassett was fantastic in this. I think her performance at the end where she was trying to convince yeah. her that she and was yet, good And what they enough. still managed to do, every character was still in this episode. Yeah. Oh, well, I like because it's an ensemble piece, so they can use, say, two or three characters prominently. Because, for example, like Helen George, they didn't use her very much this week. No. He's no. absolutely brilliant. Again, Call the Midwife has got better and better as it's gone on. And I now think Gary what... likes this, Matt. Is there any other drama that he, you think he has dismissed that he would like just as much as this? I don't know. I think this blows is the... my mind. I think this is, the, this is the one drama that... And again, as he said, though, if Miranda Hawk... It's because Miranda Hawk was in it before. And she's not mm. in it anymore. I mean, there, there is a list that I have of programmes that I eventually <laughs> will go back to. Oh, uh, we need... Is the list available one day? I'll, 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 to... I'll publish it if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I can, can, uh, it's an old document. I think I one, it, but one, it was like uh, there was always that idea. I mean, life on Mars is on it because I never got on with it. The but first you didn't time, like the seventies element. But I don't know, but I might go back because everybody talks about how good it is and it does well, end well. So while we're on sort of depressing e show, should we talk life and death row, Luke? Because I know you've watched this today. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> was this the BBC Three one? Yeah. Should we talk yes. a bit about BBC Three moving online and what we think about just generally? Yeah. I mean, I don't like the new site. I have to say, I don't like the Daily Dump, is it? Or what's it called? The Daily, Daily, daily yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's not called that. <laughs> I think it is, actually. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, they've been very selective in what they've done. They've been very clever in that the third series of Cuckoo is being shown online. 
you, you yeah, used well, the, the clever cl- and cl- well, clever it, meaning it, nobody has to sit through it on telly. I well, suppose. no, but they they know that that kind Cuckoo of program is a big. Uh, yeah, I could do a mini review of Cuckoo because I have seen Cuckoo. It oh, is, well, then, yeah. they're very much they've gone sort of 1970 sitcom with this first episode where Helen Baxendale gives birth and Greg Davis is rushing around the hospital, ends up bumping into someone that they do the classes with and, and the nurses think he's the dad to her baby. Ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> ha 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 ha. Was that your attempt at candle yeah, I actually, I'm surprised how good Taylor Lautner is in this. I think everyone was a bit sniffy about him, you know, coming from Twilight or whatever. But I think he's a lot better than Andy Samberg. I know it's not saying much, but Andy Samberg no, is really far too not. manic in this, whereas he's sort of the straight man to Greg Davis' is sort of, you know, broadly humorous. But the point I was making is that people who would like Cuckoo will follow online. They're trying, they're doing, they're being very clever. I just think the ploys. site's not great. It's just I'm like... Not- it's not it designed feels... for you and I. It's designed for the younger generation. It's supposed me, to me, look me, like Sorry, me, me and Luke are still in the demographic for BBC yeah, Three. I only, have, you know. To be fair, only just. But 80, still, is are. it 16 to 34? 80, okay, we've got a few more years. We've got a few more years. It, yeah. 18 to 34. So well, there I'm, you go. I'm, 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 I'm a good nine years past it. So yeah, you're in BBC seven. Four. Go I'm and watch BBC, Yeah, that's fine. I will. Life in Death Row, it was on originally in 2014, the first series. Three parter, as far as I know, not shown in the UK, in the US rather. It is made by a UK production. Is it, company. Is it a Scottish document? Because you hear the voice every so often asking mm. questions, don't you? This Scottish. Yeah. This was about. Is it? Was his name? Is it Michael Lee Lopez? I can't. I can't remember the name of the um, Daniel. Daniel Lopez. Daniel. Daniel Lopez. It was an interesting case in and of itself because there was that doubt that you never knew whether he actually intended to. He basically killed a police officer by running him over while he was trying to put, like, but not bollards, but, like, you know, the things that slow you... He's the trying spi- to put the, the, spikes, the stings. The stings that slow you down, because yeah. was, he was involved yeah. in a chase at the time. Yeah. And there was a thing about, did he swerve right to specifically hit the police officer? Or, or did he just lose yeah, control? Yeah, did he just and, lose yeah. control? He couldn't see. Or not see. see him at all. Yeah, a lot of the jury who they interviewed in this... Um, found him very hard to like he kept smirking when they showed pictures of the dead officer and then there was this whole thing about him wanting to die he wanted the execution to come forward you learnt that he kept trying to kill himself as a youth his father Mm. abused him, he had this horrible life he had seven children at the age of 27 certainly two of them had different mothers because we met them in the documentary I I loved uh, every angle they went at here, the one of the mothers and the, the one of his daughters, daughters. You had the, the the godmothers from the church who I thought were excellent. They were the only people who'd sort of come to terms with his decision. I like that mm. there was these people who were actually sticking up for his right to want to die. Everyone else was trying to hurry, like his lawyer was trying to hurry through the process of trying to get him to you know, be found criminally insane and that he yeah. couldn't make the decision on his own, that they wanted to increase the appeal. I thought the most sympathetic character was the widow of the of the officer. Yes, and yeah, there was that scene where she way. was at this meeting with other police widows, and they were talking about their ordeals of going through this process of the, you know, waiting for these execution dates to come out, to happen. And it was just, it was so eye-opening, and this whole thing. And, you know, just thinking about this 27-year-old, and all the decisions he's had to make and everything he's gone through, and it's just so and how upsetting. his life is, the life is basically mm. ruined, yeah. you know. It's he's so 27, upsetting. his life yeah. is over. And then they show at the end the people, them leaving the, it ends with the, the, the execution. Obviously you don't see that on screen, but you see them going in and leaving, mm. and, and just the access that they get in this is ridiculous, but it's so well done. If yeah. you're really keen to watch it, you don't want to watch it online, it's actually being shown on Tuesday night on BBC One. Okay. Uh, so you can watch it there but it, honestly Gary talks a lot about making a murderer this is up there with the best crime documentaries mm. you'll see honest to goodness I Life just think the whole life. thing that there was that and and they like this sort of epilogue from the was it the judge the woman that they mm. she was the, the judge woman that... yeah and she was there saying you know two people didn't deserve to die and they both now, are now dead you know she mm. was saying that she thought that he didn't actually mean to kill the person in the first place. And, and, now actually, and also you're watching death. something and empathising, and but there's this impending doom throughout yeah. 
Because you know where it's ending up. You know what the end well, result is going to be. Well, you don't know. You don't because you don't know whether I. You know, until they don't get that. You know, the 